this hole in the ground doesn't actually look like too much, but it's pretty deep I hear. Well Nathan, it opens out like a big football field and it has little channels that divert off here and there. On the surface level, it's probably about a 20 metre lake, and that's about it. After that, it degrees itself out and heads about 80 metres or a bit more that way, 60 80 metres. And this way, about 120 metres is the furthest they've been. Opens down into a little small channel. So The hole's named as the shaft, uh, mainly because uh, when you get a sunny day like today, you get this big beam of light going down to the ground. That's why they call it the shaft. Um, it was found here a long time ago, not sure exactly when, uh, by a farmer and his uh, horse. He was playing the paddock. The horse actually stumbled over a small little hole in the ground, put its legs through, um, basically finding this hole in the ground. Over the years, between me and my father and my grandfather, uh, we've tipped rocks down it to not basically fill it up, just to basically a way of um, finding and get rid of rocks out of the paddock and we plough the paddock up. Um, taught at skin dives and so forth. Uh, we probably tipped over 300 tonne we reckon down there. They reckon it's only just a small little land hill. Has there ever been any accident involved with this? Um, yeah, Nathan, back in 1973 uh, there was an unfortunate accident. Apparently four people drowned down here. We had the South Australian Police Division from the divers come down to try and recover the bodies. How did it actually happen? How did they end up dying? Well Nathan, what actually happened was back in those early pioneer years of uh, diving, they um, have air mixes today that can go a lot deeper. They tried to go deeper than what they could. Uh, at that stage, back in those days, they could only go to around about 60 metres with that type of air. And uh, these days we can go a lot deeper. So, um, yeah, basically what happened is they went too deep and uh, found out that, um, yeah, they, they couldn't, couldn't get back. Couldn't get back in enough time to, yeah, have enough air to resurface. So, having people come onto your property for a bit of fun and a bit of diving and ending up dying quite tragically, uh, that must have had a terrible effect on your family. Um, yeah, Nathan, it did. I mean, there for a while, basically, I think the hole was closed. My pa was uh, probably a bit of an emotional wreck and so forth, so yeah, it had a bit of an effect. Roughly like this, this is about the orientation. Okay. Um, so you can see there's a hundred meter scale, mm -hmm. and this is the main cavern. Yep. So that point there is pretty much the hole we were just looking at. So then it comes about 100, 100 to 120 meters across, so you correct about the size of a football field. And then this is the um, sort of main tunnel that's been known about for a long time, but it's been too deep to get into. But this is very an obvious large entrance into this across here, mm -hmm. that goes down about 85 metres over here, and that was the first one explored. We've since found a new tunnel, and this goes the deep one, goes to 120, so there's, each of those tunnels about 100 metres long. boulders on the floor in the direction of the falling so we can put them on the maps yep. and uh, the other side is just our, uh, our schedule of the dive starting the surface 40 meters 70 meters back to 45 40 and all our decompression stops 18 meters 15 12 9 6 3 and uh, associated gases to put there so we need all the information and this here is a compass which we use when we're actually doing the survey 